Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks. And today I want to talk to you about old school magic tokens. And I want to do that because I got something very special in the mail from the United Kingdom. I got this from eBay. As you can see I ripped it open already, but I didn't I didn't take everything out because I want to do that with you right here on camera. And I first would like to talk about a little bit about the history of Magic the Gathering and tokens because it's quite interesting. When Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Arabian Nights came out and some of the other sets, Antiquities and such, there actually were no token cards. You would have cards like the Hive, right? Uh, right? I've got it right here. Um, you can tap this and you can make a 1-1 Flying Wasp token. We all know that, but there actually weren't any token cards. And what you could do, and what many people still do, including myself, you can use the good old glass beads. So they're in here in my magic pouch. You can use these to represent a 1-1 flyer. Let me make some space. You will tap it, you would say, okay, I got one 1-1 flyer, that's it. Now, as you can imagine, this could be confusing because you can, can also have different type of counters, right? You can have plus one, plus one counters. You can even have minus one, minus one counters. You can have different creatures representing different things. This is a 1-1 flyer, but maybe you're also making other tokens that are just 1-1 creatures or 0-1 creatures. And so what people did was make custom tokens. So they would get like a Magic the Gathering card, right? And they would make custom tokens. And of course you see this now uh, more often uh, because of the access to quality printing, right? It's something that most of us have now in the 21st century in 2021. Uh, this card was given to me, by the way, by my friend Enrico. Uh, so just a little shout out to him and to the Venetia Alliance. I'll put the Instagram uh, link to his account in the description below. So if you're interested uh, in that play group in Italy, it's uh, it's really, well, actually I only know Enrico, So, uh, but it's, it's a really nice guy and I'm looking forward to actually go to uh, Venice when I have the time. And of course, when all the restrictions are off the table, but okay. So we have these counters, we have the glass beads, but then something happened and I believe it was in a Duelist magazine when Fallen Empires came out because Fallen Empires was also known as the token set because in Fallen Empires, you can make tons of tokens, you can get tons of counters. So what they did is they gave a uh, punch out token card with the Duelist magazine. And I just wanna show you because I, I have a few in my Fallen Empires collection and I'm just gonna take some of them out. I don't wanna take all of them out. Um, but you've got little cards, just close it here like this. So if you look closely, this actually represents a 1-1 Suproling token. You can see the 1-1 here. And as you can imagine, these things are very, very tiny. They're very fragile. They're super easy to lose. And the background, you would see another token for another creature. You have to look very closely as to know what it actually represents. So it was very unclear, but these were kind of the first official token cards for Magic the Gathering. But then something happened in, in 1995, there was a company called, I believe they're called Citadel Gaming, and they were located in Oregon. And they actually made their own token cards for the game of Magic. And they weren't connected to Magic the Gathering or anything, but they were actually uh, quite popular. Now those token cards are actually in here. So I'm gonna open it up here and I'm actually gonna show you those cards, those tokens. And let me see here if I can open it up. Here we go. As you can see, they're quite small. And these were sold in a box. You can get them in a box with a lot of different tokens. And I'll put some pictures in this video and a link if you'd like to know more about these type of tokens. Because there are several articles about these tokens and they had three editions. They had the Alpha edition, the Beta edition, and the Unlimited edition. And unfortunately, after the Unlimited edition, they went bankrupt, despite the fact that they were quite popular at the time. So I'm just gonna try to show this to you. So here we have the token. So this is a citizen token. And obviously this goes uh, with the card Ecation Town. And this is a 01 Thrall token that goes with Breeding Pits. 
And here we see a Kamarit token and we see a Suprolin token. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna take them out here and I'm gonna give you a closer look. Uh, let me see what's the best way of opening these. Okay, so I'm just gonna open these and I'll be back in a moment to kind of show you the tokens out of the packaging and actually with the right card next to them. So here we are, we're back. Um, I took a moment to kind of get the, get the right cards with the right tokens from Citadel Gaming. Um, here you go. So this is a citizen. And this of course goes with the card Ecasian Town. So when you cast this card, put four citizen tokens into play and three three this tokens as one one white creatures. And here you have the actual token card. So this was the first token card ever to be made, you know, and that's 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 something that's pretty special. And what I like is that they have little pieces of flavor text as well. So in times of need, all citizens respond to the call to arms. Right, and you see us with his fist up high. Yeah, let's go for it. Really cool. And I also have, let me put that over there. And I also have the Comrade token. So Comrade is just, ah. I love playing with blue and Fallen Empire just because it's so bad. And if you can make it work, it gives you so much satisfaction. So here we've got Hummer, it's spawning bad. And uh, I actually use this card I'll put, I'll put a link in um, in the description if you want to see me play with the Hummer at Spawning Bad. So two blue uh, for an Inch Shaman and two blue and one, and I can sacrifice a blue creature to put X tokens into play, so Comrade tokens. Comrade tokens are basically baby Hummerids. And this token actually confuses me a little bit because it looks more like a Merman than a Comrade token. They gather whenever we lay our debt to rest at sea. So I guess he's putting the debt to rest at sea and then the camera tokens come. But on the token itself, I don't really seem to, to see any, let me have a closer look to see any of the tokens themselves. Because of course in Fallen Empires, the merfolk were fighting against the Hummerites. And the camera token is a baby Hummerite. So this is the Comrade token, and then we've got the Thrall token, the Breeding Pit, which is a card I really like because you can do so much with the Breeding Pit. Obviously, you can combine it with Evan Prater, you can combine it with, um, with of course, Lord of the Pit. So let me zoom it in here properly. So Breeding Pit, one black and three in Shaman, during your upkeep, pay two black or bury Breeding Pit, and at the end of your turn, put a Thrall token into play, an O1 Thrall, and look at it. Here we've got the token. So that is pretty sweet. We drove them away, but they kept coming back. Citadel Gaming. Beautiful. I really like the art on this one, personally. And then the last one, I'm actually missing the Goblin now for Goblin Warren, so that's definitely one I still need for my collection. Uh, this is a Suprolling token. And this, of course, the Thalit. This is how you make Suprolling tokens. And um, yeah, just the one green, and during your upkeep, put a spore counter on the thalet. Remove three spore counters to put a suproling token into play, a 1 1 suproling token. And hey, we've got the 1 1 suproling token. Pretty cool, right? So I'm really, really happy to have these, and I'm going to add them to my Fallen Empire collection. And yeah, it's just a great addition to my collection, I'm really happy. I'm going to look for that Goblin token uh, from Citadel Gaming, because I think that still needs to be, needs to be listed. So here we see all four nice in a row. And of course we need the red one for Goblin Warrens and I am complete. Um, that is it for today. This is my little history lesson on tokens in Magic the Gathering. If I made any mistakes, I'm sure I did. Let me know in the comments below. Always love to hear from you. Always love to get to know more about the world of Magic the Gathering. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that very easily. You can give me a like, you can give me a thumbs up. You can share this video on uh, your socials. Uh, you can leave a comment, like I said already. I'm actually curious to hear from you. Do you like this kind of trivia based videos, because maybe I'll make a little bit more of them. I do enjoy talking about my favorite game. 
Um, and you can also become a Patreon of the show, by the way, or I should say a patron. Um, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. There's probably a link popping up right now and you can check out how you can sponsor the show and how you can, can help me to stay afloat. And you can already do that for just $1 a month. So I would say click on the info card and have a look around. If it's something for you, you might want to consider to join. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, let's take a look at the end scroll. Let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing, wonderful, and uh, gorgeous, just gorgeous patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.